Lesson 2. Basic Input and Output. To follow along with this lesson, you will need to create a new console project and add a new file named main.cpp to it, as we did in Lesson 1. In this lesson, we explain the basics of how to send data to programs and get feedback from them. We begin with a Hello World project like the one from our previous lesson. Since we didn't explain the code in the previous lesson, we will do that now. This program demonstrates how to send output to the console window. The console window is the black window that pops up when we execute our code. For this program, it looks like this. Looking at the code, we see that the first line is an include statement. This includes the code from the IO stream file that allows us to perform input and output. Below this, we have the main function. Each program starts its execution inside the main function. So this line is the first to be executed and the execution proceeds downward. This first line of code inside the main function does all of the interesting work in this program. C-O-U-T is pronounced C-Out and it is the output stream that we will use to send data to the console window so that we can see it. In this case, it sends the string hello world to the console window as we saw before when we executed the program. After this, we have ENDL, which stands for the end line character. End line sends the cursor to the beginning of the next line. So if we remove the end line and execute the program, we see this. Notice that the message press any key to continue sits at the end of hello world instead of at the beginning of the next line. We use double less than signs for what is called the insertion operator, which signals the direction of the data flow. You can think of these as arrows inserting the message hello world into the cout stream and then inserting an end line. As a final remark, we note that we used std and a double colon before cout and end line because these are part of the C++ standard. To compile and execute the program, press control and F5. This is the start without debugging option, which will keep the window from closing without any additional code. Pressing Ctrl and F5 simultaneously, we see this. Next, we'll look at a second program that demonstrates input. For this program, you can create a new project using the method that we showed in Lesson 1, or you can just replace the code in our Hello World program with this. The first line outputs the question, what is your favorite number, and uses the end line to send the cursor to the beginning of the next line. The next line of code creates an integer called iNumber. The letters int are short for integer and are used to designate the type of data held by the variable that I have called iNumber. The line after this uses the input stream to take input from the console and put it into the integer iNumber. This line uses cin, which is our input stream. Notice that we use greater than symbols instead of the less than symbols that we used with cout. This is because the data flows in the opposite direction. This is called the extraction operator because it pulls data out of the stream cin and puts it into iNumber. The next line outputs the messages, your favorite number is, followed by the value in iNumber and an end line. As before, we execute this code by pressing Ctrl and F5 to keep the console window open. When the program executes, it pops up the console window with the message, what is your favorite number? Then the program waits for input. This is what the CN command does. Now if we type in a number like 21 and press enter, we see the line, your favorite number is 21, followed by the message, press any key to continue. That's a brief introduction to input and output. If you have any questions, please post them to our forum at zoax.net. For more information and examples, please visit our lesson page.